This lesson is about simple harmonic motion. That's motion similar to the one you're watching uh, with the Dumbo here. Okay, yeah, we missed that. Sorry. Okay. Oh, we missed that as well. It's not interesting. Uh, okay, just a reminder of some of the terms that uh, we, we're going to use. Okay, we've already looked about before uh, in waves. Okay, that when we measure the displacement of a wave, or in this case we're going to be looking at something that's oscillating, we're measuring the distance and the direction from the equilibrium position. The equilibrium position is the position, uh, for example, the mass would be here when it wasn't um, oscillating, yeah, when the forces are balanced. Okay, the amplitude is the maximum displacement. The period, that's the time taken for one complete oscillation. So that's either of a wave or, in this case, uh, of the oscillation. So it's one complete up and down, one complete down and up. The frequency, that's the number of oscillations or the number of uh, vibrations in one second or the number of waves that pass a point in one second. And there is a mathematical relationship between the frequency and the period. They are reciprocals of each other. By the way, just to mention, the period is normally given the, the symbol capital T. Now, this is a little bit harder to explain, but we have two waves here that are identical. But as you can see here, uh, the peak of one wave is, is where the trough of another wave, and the trough of one wave is where the peak of another now, if you imagine these waves were sine waves, they'd be shifted by 180 degrees. So we say that these two waves have a phase difference of 180 degrees, or if we're talking radians, pi radians. Uh, these waves are shifted by 90 degrees. Okay, so in effect, one is a, a sine wave and one's a cosine wave, or pi over two radians. Okay, there's an oscillation. Quite like this gif. Don't know why. So, simple harmonic motion is defined, so that means I, you've got to learn this, periodic motion in which the restoring force is proportional and the, in the opposite direction to the displacement. Okay, now that's why springs uh, oscillate in simple harmonic motion. If you remember Hooke's law, yeah, the, the, the force of the spring is proportional to the extension, that's the, the x here, but in the opposite direction, that's the significance of the minus there. You know, when you pull, pull the spring down, i.e. The, uh, the, the force is in the opposite direction. Now, if we graphed this motion, yeah, so if, if you imagined graphing the, dis, the displacement at different times, uh, we get something like this. And, of course, you recognize this. Yeah, so at this peak-to-peak, um, -peak, that would indicate the period. And uh, this distance here will be the amplitude. We give the symbol uh, x naught to the amplitude. Now, of course, that looks very similar to a sine wave, doesn't it? Yeah, a sine wave has a, a period two pi radians. Okay, amplitude there x naught. Okay, y equals sun x together. Okay, so if we want to graph this motion, this. This is the, the function that we can use. Okay. T is the period. This quantity here, okay, this is the um, lowercase omega. Okay, and this represents something called the angular frequency. And the angular frequency is equal to 2 pi divided by the period, that's in your data booklet, or 2 pi times the frequency of, of oscillation. That is not in the data booklet. But of course, you know that period and frequency are reciprocals of each other. So it should be fairly easy to, to figure that out. Now this is when the motion starts, that the displacement is zero, and the time equals zero. But of course, it might be that we, we want to look at a motion that starts at the uh, maximum displacement, at the amplitude. In which case, we're going to get a similar function, but it starts not at zero, but at the um, maximum displacement, and this of course is a cosine curve. So this uh, function here would represent this motion, that the displacement at any time t is equal to the amplitude times the cosine of omega t. Remember, omega is the angular frequency, which is 2 pi over the period, 2 pi times the frequency. Now when we use these formulas in the calculator, yeah, omega t is in radians, so you must make sure your calculator is in radians. It can be shown that, i.e. I'm not going to show you, uh, that the velocity 
it's only time t, is equal to v naught, which is the maximum velocity, times the cosine vector t. That's if we start at x equals 0 and t equals 0, or if we start at x equals x naught and t equals 0, we can use this formula. v equals minus v naught sine omega t. But v naught is the maximum velocity. Omega is the angular frequency. t is the time that we're trying to find the velocity. There are other formulas. Again, I'm not going to show where they, these come from. Okay, these are the ones we just talked about. Look at omega t is, is cosine of omega t. That's all in the brackets there. It can also be shown that the velocity at any displacement x is equal to plus or minus omega times the square root of x naught squared times minus x squared. That's all in the square root there. But plus or minus indicates, of course, that at any displacement, that sometimes the um, the, you know, the, the, the mass or whatever is going up, and sometimes it's going down. And also this one, the acceleration is minus omega squared x. Now, this one is not in the data object, and you must remember this one. It's one of the, the four or five forms that aren't in the data booklet. You need to know. All these are the ones are in the data booklet. This one is not. A equals minus omega squared x. And again, that indicates that the acceleration in the force is in the opposite direction to the displacement. If you pull it down, the acceleration is up, and vice versa. So, yeah, that's crucial. That is not in the data book. You must remember that. Now, where is it going fastest? Well, if we look at this very carefully, you can see it's going fastest in the middle at the equilibrium position, okay, i.e. when x equals naught. Now, that means, then, if we want to calculate the maximum velocity, that's when x equals naught, and minus naught squared is nothing. So we just find the square root of x naught squared, and the square root of x naught squared is just x naught. So this is a result we get, that the maximum velocity is equal to plus or minus, because it can be either way. Of course, if you want the magnitude of the velocity, it's just going to be positive, times omega x naught, where x naught is the amplitude. See there, the, the um, maximum velocity is proportional to the amplitude. Okay, now where is the acceleration maximum? Well, if you think about it, the acceleration is going to be a maximum and the force is a maximum. Now, the force is going to be a maximum either at the top of the motion or the bottom motion. The force in the middle, of course, in the equilibrium position, is zero. So the acceleration in the middle is zero. Okay, so we're going to have a maximum acceleration when x equals the plus or minus x naught. And we know there, of course, that the velocity is zero. So... The maximum acceleration, remember, a equals minus omega squared x. So a max, the maximum acceleration, is going to be minus omega squared x naught. Again, that's a useful result to, to remember. For an oscillating spring, well, we know that the force equals minus kx, that's Hooke's law. And we know that acceleration is minus omega squared x. So don't forget, force equals mass times acceleration, which is minus m omega squared x. Okay, now we know f is minus kx, so we have minus kx, that's the force, equals minus m omega squared x. We arrange that, we get k equals m omega squared. Divide both sides by m, take the square root, we get omega is the square root of k over m. We know omega is 2 pi over t, so substituting that into there we get this uh, formula, t equals 2 pi root m over k. And if you're in my classroom, uh, we do and that as a practical. Some examples here. Actually, uh, I'm not going to do this. You can, you can pause this and go through them if you want. Uh, I won't go through this. Simply putting uh, numbers into formulas. Second example. Again, pause this if you want to have a look where this comes from. Again, simply putting numbers into formulas. I say simply, of course. Another one there. Pause it if you want to have a look at that. Just go to sleep for a bit. Now, don't panic. I, I know these um, formulas look complicated, but uh, as long as you're okay with using your calculator, don't get to switch it to radians and that. Look at what the question gives you. Look at what formulas you've got. Select the right formula. Of course, it's going to be harder than that, but we will see. Okay, if you're in my class now, you try some questions uh, or do a simple practical. So there's the, the, the formula we just drew after.
And I think that's it. Okay, simple harmonic motion. Next lesson, we're going to look at the energy in simple harmonic motion.